Hey, it's Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Monday, it's October the 19th. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and I'm a little late getting this done today. I apologize. Um, I've had some other things going on that I've been uh, working on on another project during the um, during the early afternoon, so it's been a little later before I could get back in the office. So uh, had a couple of days last week, and I'll probably have a few more weeks of this before I get back on track to my normal days again but anyway uh in the big picture today we had a trading range we had a trend line coming down to break a move and a move to a new low we had a trend a two-tier channel working up there's some shorter term ones within there uh and because we were swinging both ways uh i liked you know being able to go short either way here um but notice we had a break we never did make a new high here so this one was a little bit confusing but but notice this you had this trend channel working down and we just come off the high of a range so the odds are we're going here so uh, you had to be real careful about going back long here until you had your new low in place but then we just kept going so then that kind of opened it up to go lower this one is the one that tripped up more people than anything right here I got at least two emails on this uh, because look what I we're working down and we get a break and everybody's looking for a new low um, but what happened was several of you went short right here. It's not a very good setup on my chart, but I got a couple of charts for some other people where they had a big bearish bar here. So I don't, uh, I don't know why my chart looks so much different, but notice what you got. You got a little trading range there. And if you go short on the second entry, which is right here, I'd been going short behind below a hugely bullish bar right there. Uh, and going short right into this support right here. So that's why I didn't like that second entry short. Yeah, there's a second entry short there, but look how far we are still. We're not back to the EMA, but uh, there's a trading range, and you know you got to kind of see that congestion in that trading range there. Uh, but there's also a little trend line working up uh, there as well that's going higher. Look how we're working up that trend line. And so you want to at least get a close below an attempt to go higher, but I liked going short right here. Actually, you could have gone short here because it broke higher and turned down and went out the other side. And then uh, you got a little bitty tiny doji right here. So I liked adding on right there. Um, thinking we'd probably go ahead and make the new low then. But I wasn't about to go short on my second entry right there with all that congestion, that close to the, you know, a double bottom. And not enough room to scalp out. Really, uh, you got more bounces right across here. This looks like a little failed break lower and then a failed break higher. Um, so, you know, but I, I saw at least one chart where I could understand why they liked it. But if they'd have drawn their shorter term trend line, they still wouldn't have got sucked in there because they would have seen the break and a new high. And, and another thing is a lot of times you're better off to wait till you get a little closer to the EMA because that's where we're likely headed before you're going to get a turn down. Um, so I hope that makes sense. But there's really two entries here on my chart. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a double circle there just so it doesn't confuse people. But I, that's one I like adding on because that's a pretty big move down. So we're probably going to test this low again, um, even if it's a range day. You may not make this big move down, but you figure you're going to test the low and try to make a new one. And so by doubling up here, this was a nice trade. Um, and we did get a close out and two attempts to try to go higher that couldn't. But we had a failed break higher on my chart right there. It went higher and then turned down all in the same bar. Um, let me just move that where you can see it. And you see we got real close to the EMA on that one. And then it turned and went right out the bottom. So... Uh, but then it pulls back and you you know you can see that resistance across there on that little trading range you get a little tiny doji uh so i liked adding on there i would have liked it even better if it would have ticked higher and turned down but i still liked it all the same because it's at the high of resistance and a big move down so i hope that's clear um, i like this one it's a it's definitely aggressive but look at that bullish bar and how far away we are from the EMA, and it's a failed break lower. We've got a triple bottom across there, and that's a failed break lower, and we're probably going to at least come back and test that, but probably come all the way back to the EMA and test it, even if we're going lower. And so, and if you catch these, this is what usually happens. You get, they got everybody trapped down here, and look at it go. 
and you know your clue is when it goes right through the EMA and it never checks up and you really don't get another chance to enter till here you get a second entry long um, you get a nice bullish bar it went lower and then turn and went right out the top um, I really don't like entering until a break above that one just to be sure because this is not a very good signal bar so uh, when you if by waiting on this one this was really your good signal bar and look at that thing it closes on it's very high just go long on a stop there and you might even let it go longer and drop a limit order in there but I wouldn't fool around with that one because that was a huge move up just like this was a huge move oops didn't mean to grab that there huge move down and uh, you're probably gonna test that high again so you don't want to miss that trade and you might get a second leg like this one putting these back where they were so that was a nice long there and you make a couple of moves up and then it turns down and then you get that little trap it turns higher and then turns down right there and goes out the same bar um, so that's a nice setup and then it, you got this trend line here let me show you this one this one's a little bit harder to see and this one was close to being a green one but you're trying to go higher there a couple of different times and it turns down right there uh, you got enough room to get out before you get here. It's real close, but it's right off that trend line, and that's um, like your third. Notice it. you got your first two swings, and that's like the third attempt that confirms your trend line. So I like, and you shot below the EMA and pulled back to it. So I like that one. And if you see this, you, you, you may not have seen this two-tiered channel, but I found it by drawing it off those highs and pulling it down. And so I was looking for prices to come down here, hoping that, and thinking that there's probably a uh, the other side of the channels down here and that's exactly where it bounces and if you saw that I'm okay with making this one blue almost but if you didn't see that this is a green one and again it's notice there's a double bottom and it fails and it tries to put it gives you two pushes lower you don't really get a break outside this trend line um, it's real close right there depending on whether you you know you could it's like a breakout pullback. You don't want to go short there uh, because it's not a very good setup, and you got to go short right into that low. So by waiting, you kind of catch that bounce right there, and that's a pullback to retest that breakout area that notice never got tested, and then it takes off again, and you'll see that over and over. So I like entering on both of those, and I like this one for a little bit of aggressive long. If you saw it like I like I explained, if you found your your, tier, your trend line and off the top and pulled it down here and saw it bounce right there. I'm okay with making that one blue, but at this point it's green. And plus it's a failed break lower below that support area. It's a retest of this. A um, lot of reasons to think about going long there. And if it does start going higher, then you're going to look for a measured move. There's your low and then there's your high. And where does that put you? Right back up to the overnight high. And uh, so that's a likely scenario we don't quite get there which leads to a bigger sell-off but it's real close so um, but then we bounce there we pull back it's tempting to go long right there uh, but that's and there is a sh smaller second entry right there but that's such a big bar you got to wait on a break and put a limit order if you did that I'm okay with it I'll, I will give that one a green circle just for that reason but it also bounces off of here it bounces off the trend line but it's such a big bar and it's so close to that you gotta let it break higher and then put your limit order in and it would have come all the way back and filled you all the way to the lows of this but uh, I think you're better off waiting uh, to enter here but again it's a first entry and it's real near the top and it's a huge bar again so I probably should circle that one green uh, if you use the lemon order, but it wouldn't have come back quite as far. But when it, let me make sure you can see this. I'm getting so many circles in there. But notice how it came back again. Notice your double bottom, so that's a new low, and you get that failed. So that's like a failed uh, second entry short right there. 
and that really lets you know that hey we're going higher here so I like that one as a blue one and it did go lower and then turn out and go out the top side and you don't want to be going short because you've got a trend line working and there's a shorter term channel there too we did get an overshoot and a break but it still went all the way you know, we were we were working on that measured move and uh, and because that's a double bottom you can count that as a new low and there's a first entry pullback and there's a second entry I don't like going short right there because um, it's right it, there's a lot of overlap and all but when it pulls back and tries to go lower again and then gives you this nice bullish bar if you got that um, I like that one for a long it sh this really I meant, should have made this one green because there's a lot of overlap there and it is close to that high got to come back and change that one to green um, it's a little bit aggressive but you can see we shoot right on up and this was where I was looking at the, the likely highs because look how we had that was where the highs were from Friday afternoon and we shot above it so that's what was where I was looking for my first possibility of the highs of the range and then up here because we did get a measured move to up there as well but we never got up there so but we push out we get a break here and we get a few legs up to a new high we find this resistance we get a little failed break higher it pulls back it tries to go higher again and look at that big bearish bar I like going short right there um, thinking that we're at least coming back to this trend line but because it's a range the range may be in play and we may go all you know we may go a lot lower um, so I like getting short right there you can't get short on that one because it's right into that trend line and there is a little bit of overlap. It would have worked there. And it, I guess, you know, looking back at that, I, I wouldn't have taken, I would not have taken that anyway. It's a failed second entry long, so it's a trap as well. Uh, but I'm guessing there's not, you know, it didn't really shoot down like a trap. I'm guessing there's not going to be a lot of people that get fooled there. But there is a failed second entry long. There's some reasons to consider that trade. Uh, but this is a clear two-tiered channel working higher, and we don't quite have a measured move yet. So I'm just not crazy about going uh, short right there. And I don't, you don't want to go long there because look how we shot right through that EMA. Um, you're not quite back to the trend line, and then it just goes right on through the trend line too. Um, and then there's a second entry long there, and that one is tempting uh, to go long. But that's right back into that resistance area I was telling you about. Um, actually it was acting as support and now look notice how there's a double top right there and there was a double bottom there earlier and so I think you're gonna to have to wait on a better trap or something and this is a bit really big bar um, if you did get long there looking for it to retest the high um, when that ended as a doji, I would exit. And somebody else asked me about that earlier today, uh, when to scratch a trade. And when you're learning and, and, and you're just uh, uh, sim trading, I don't recommend ever scratching a trade. Just, just write them out, either be wrong or right, and use that to study and to learn from. Uh, because you'll, get, you'll scratch yourself out of too many good trades that look like they're going to fail and fool you, and you, you'll just mess yourself up more. So when you're learning and you're sim trading, don't scratch out of a trade. Just take the trade, let it play out, and then study it at the end of the day. And if you got long here, uh, there's a couple of things that uh, should have alerted you. Um, the highs across here, the highs and lows, this kind of swing point in here. You can see it. It even was a swing point. It's acting as resistance and support. And it just kind of carried on across here today. Um, I ended up moving. Actually, originally I had this line down here, right in here, and I ended up moving it higher because we got more touches up here later. Um, but you still got to be wary, wary of where that was, and you got to see that double top right there. And we make a little lower high. Um, of course, we didn't make the lower high yet because we, we had to we had to break above there and fail. But if you took that trade right there at second entry, the reason I would be leery of it is unless you've got a trap, you really don't want to try to get long yet because you got this trend line, you got this little channel working lower, and that's the first break of it. So I'd want a failed second entry. Now, if this would have broken lower here and failed and then went higher, then you go long. Uh, but that's, you know, you don't have 
a failed second entry short here yet. You don't have a trap to the short side, so you got to be real careful getting long right there. And um, turns out to be a great short. You don't know this is going to rock it off like that. Um, and this made a little bit higher high than that, so this is like a new high, and you get a pullback first entry, and you get a pullback in a, a failed second entry long there. It's a breakout pullback short. Uh, failed second entry long. It's a little bit aggressive because we didn't quite get back to the EMA, but we didn't because it was just testing this little support area and it, and it became resistance. You kind of see that across there and it tested it and then turned straight down. Look how bearish that is. You may not have even gotten in that with a stop. Hopefully you could. It, you could drop a, wait till it, as it went lower, do a limit order and see if it would come back and fill you. And it might have. It came back and bounced off of it a few times before it went lower. And then guess where it bounces? Right down here where the support was. Bounces to the tick off of that. And this this wasn't bullish enough for me to like entering that on a stop. Plus we didn't go lower. We didn't have that failed break lower yet. So I don't see any reason to get long there. There's a first entry short here. And then it pulls back and it gives you a second entry. But look at that. It's just, you know, it's just congestion you don't want to get short or long the bars are too big but then you get the failed second entry short which is what i was saying you, you were looking for up here that you never got but you get it here let me explain this and show it to you this is real important look at that low you're pulling back you get a first entry short you pull back and you get a second entry short and it and as soon as it breaks above here it's a failure and so just go long you know you're anticipating that possible failure Again, look at that line right up through there and just drag it down and it's bouncing and closing right along that line. So when it turns up right there and notice all, there's some matching lows and it fail, breaks lower and fails and turns up. It's There's several reasons to like that. We've already had our break here in new low and we just bounced off the low of the trading range. So where are we likely going next? We're going to the high of the trading range. Just like when we failed and broke higher up here when we started heading down, the likelihood was we were going to the low of the trading range. So now we're probably headed to the high. And so you wait on that failure. There it is. And look at that. And you can tell that trap people by how that shot up. And then it pulls back. I made this one green. Um, there's a there's a uh, smaller term second entry short there but it bounced right off that trend line and that kind of confirmed it and what I what I recommend doing was waiting on it to break above this bar actually you really were better off to wait on this bar and um, let it break above and see if you could get in with a limit order but you could have if you saw the second entry long this the hidden one um, that would be on a smaller chart. You might let it break above here and then pull back and try to get in with a limit order. I'd be okay with that. It's a little bit aggressive, but if you understand what's going on, you you realize we're we're trapping people to the low side and we're probably heading to the high side. And that was right into the two o'clock hour, so that's another reason that one's a little aggressive. But somebody sent me and said they didn't see many trades today. You got to understand the the range day, and you got to see you got to see all these trends and. Uh, trend lines and trend channels and things. And if you do, and you know, and you kind of understand what's going on, and you got to see the support across here, somewhat of a range. There's really kind of a range across here, um, but we're hit. We're we've been trending up now, so you're more looking for the failures down here and the success. We traded up into that, so you're looking for the success to go out of that, and. Um, Hope that makes sense. Yeah. Anytime you're going into um, a range, if you trade up into that range, you're you're more interested in the support than the resistance, and um, you want to see a, you know, either that support hold multiple times and get a double test rule or a failed break low or something like that. So, hope that's clear. But anyway, there were still some good trades. There were a lot of, you know, you had to be patient. There's a lot of a aggressive ones in here but um, you know you had a couple early and then you kind of had to wait till about 9 30 you had to wait from 8 30 to 9 30 to get another no actually there was a long here so 30 minutes then another 30 minutes you had a couple of trades and then from 9 30 you had to kind of wait till about 10 30 to get another decent trade and then you, from 10 30 you had to wait till 
really about 11:30 and then almost 12:30. So you know you just got to be real patient, and you got to you know when prices are down here at the low of the range, you you want to be looking to probably get long, and then once they get up here at the high, you want to be looking to get short, and then you reverse again down here when you start getting to the low, and you, a lot of times you want to wait on these traps, and you want to spot these reversals. So I hope that's clear. And I hope you had a good trading day. I'm not going to keep this any longer. I want to get it uploaded. It's almost 8 o'clock. I know there's people looking for it. So, um, and I will ask you if you, you know, I get a, I get, I get a lot of emails every day. And uh, on Friday, I've been taking Friday afternoons off and trying to get a break. And then I was kind of out of pocket this weekend. So I'm a little behind on my emails. But I would just ask that, you know, if you have a question on your emails, wait, please wait until after the video. Because I'll probably answer a lot of your questions during the video. Um, and then if I don't, then feel free to drop me an email and send me a picture of your chart too. And I'll be happy to answer your question or whatever you're, you don't understand or you're bumfuddled with. I'll, I'll try to give it a shot to answer it. Uh, but I would ask you to just wait first for the video. And that's part of the reason why I do the video. So I don't have 100 people sending me a chart every day and having to look at everybody's chart. I just don't have time. So... Um, if I looked at everybody's chart every day, I would never be able to trade or get anything else done either. So um, it's not that I'm, I don't mind answering questions at all. So feel free to send them to me if I don't answer, you know, in the video or it doesn't make sense or you're still lost or whatever. That's I, I'm always happy to answer emails. Um, but I do ask you just wait until after the video just so we're not doing a lot of redundancy. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. Hope you had a great, great day. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. This is Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.